In May 2023, a crew of experienced sailors were cruising along the Spanish coastline. It was a sunny day, the waters were calm, it was a perfect day to go sailing. But then, out of nowhere, something struck the ship. When the crew rushed to the stern of the boat, they saw that the ship's rudder had been completely sheared off, and a huge hole in the hull had been pierced. Water was pouring in, and, rudderless and unable to steer the boat to shore, the crew were forced to bail water as they radioed for help. Had they caught on a rocky reef? Had a rogue wave hit them? But then the crew discovered something had actually bitten into the ship. A shark, perhaps? A great white? Then, in that moment, they saw them. Not one, but several sleek black fins circling around the ship. It was orcas. For some reason, a pot of usually peaceful orcas had targeted and attacked the ship. Orcas are known by their nickname of killer whales, and while they've never been known to target humans in the wild, they did target this ship. But not just this ship. Multiple orca attacks on boats and sailing vessels have recently been reported off the Atlantic coast of Spain and Portugal. And not just a few. Hundreds of reports have been logged since 2020. But why? Is this a weird game created by the orcas? Is something in the ocean driving them mad? Is it revenge? Well, grab your water wings because we're diving into this mystery to find out why killer whales have decided to wage war against humans. First, let's get up close with this whale. Although actually, while often called killer whales, Orcas are the largest member of the dolphin family. They were given this nickname by the ancient tales of sailors who witnessed groups of orcas hunting larger whale species. They named them whale killers, a name that was eventually flipped around to killer whales. Huh, the more you know. Names aside, these carnivorous creatures measure up to 32 feet in length weigh up to six tons, and possess the largest dorsal fin of any marine mammal, which can reach up to six feet tall. For some perspective, some large adult orcas can be the equivalent size and weight of a fountain thundercat speedboat, and living up to the comparison, they're also some of the fastest marine mammals in the ocean, able to reach speeds of 34.8 miles per hour. So, if you ever find yourself in the ocean with an orca, don't think you can ever outswim them. But not to worry, as no fatal wild orca attacks on humans have ever been recorded. It's a different and much darker story for those kept in captivity. But that's a video for another day. Now, most interactions between wild orcas and humans have been driven by playful curiosity and have even led to some unique friendships, just like Free Willy. Now, that's a throwback reference for all the 90s kids. Man, do I feel old. But not as old as an orca, as these big old sea pandas can live anywhere from 50 up to 90 years. And typically, over the course of their long lives, orcas have never held grudges against humans. That is, until 2020. With over 500 attacks by orcas on boats, sailing off the Spanish coastline reported until 2023, resulting in at least three sunken ships. What's even scarier is how tactical the orcas are in their attacks. Just take a look at this clip. The orca deliberately targets the ship's rudder, which is vital for the ship to steer. And with one bite, it snaps it off completely. This group of orcas only took 15 minutes to break off both this ship's rudders. And what's worse, for Captain Daniel Kriz, this is the second time his boat has been attacked by orcas. The first attack was in 2020, and three years later, the orcas returned to wreak havoc again. Thankfully, this ship was still able to rely on its motors and Captain Kriz was able to slowly sail their way back to shore. But other ships haven't been so lucky, and rudderless have been left stranded in the ocean for days until the Coast Guard could rescue them. 
But how have orcas learned to so expertly target and break ships? Well, that's because behind that cute black and white face is a highly intelligent and deadly predator. Orcas are excellent hunters, working together in groups of up to 30, known as pods, to take down their prey. They're deadly even in the darkest waters, using echolocation to detect fish up to 500 feet away. With large mouths full of 3-inch sharp teeth, they shred prey that's larger than them into chunks with ease. Though by far an orca's deadliest weapon is their intelligence. Orcas have the second largest brains among all ocean mammals, weighing in at 15 pounds. However, size doesn't matter, when it comes to brains at least. Typically, bigger animals also have bigger brains to control the extra muscles and nerves in their huge bodies. While the smartest species on the planet, us, have a relatively small brain, weighing in at an average of only 3 pounds. And what scientists take into account to determine intelligence is the ratio of body size to brain size. For example, human brains are seven times the average size for animals with a similar body mass. A mammal the typical size of a human shouldn't need such a large brain as ours, but our brains have evolved to become bigger as we have used our intelligence to solve more complex tasks. Meanwhile, orcas' brains are two and a half times the average size relative to other animals with similar body mass, the same body-to-brain ratio as chimpanzees. And considering chimps can use sign language and tools, they're universally acknowledged as smart animals, with chimpanzees considered to have the same learning ability as a human toddler. So, by comparison, orcas may have the same mental capacity as a preschooler. But scientists think that this brain-to-body ratio seriously underestimates orcas' intelligence, and they may be even smarter than we realize. How smart? Well, they've adapted to live in every ocean in the world, the same way humans have adapted to live just about anywhere on land. In fact, orcas are the second furthest ranging mammal on the planet, only after humans. They can be found everywhere, from the tropical Indian Ocean to the freezing southern ocean surrounding Antarctica, and in each oceanic environment they have adapted to survive and thrive. Despite this, however, orcas are surprisingly picky eaters. Once they've decided on a food source, they'll stick to it. Northeastern Pacific resident orcas are fish eaters, whereas their coastal counterparts prefer meatier diets consisting of seals and sea otters. Meanwhile, down under in the southern hemisphere, orcas have been known to enjoy even more extreme cuisine, including stingrays. Now, stingrays are famous for their deadly, venomous spines, but to orcas off the coast of New Zealand, they're the undersea equivalent of a Dorito. To hunt the rays, these orcas have figured out that when the rays are flipped upside down, they enter a state of paralysis. In some cases, an orca will pin the ray to the ocean floor upside down, while another orca carefully removes its stinger with its teeth. The de-stung stingray is then eaten, venom-free. But as impressive as that is, these orcas also have an appetite for something far more dangerous. Sharks. While we're all terrified of coming across a shark in the ocean, sharks are scared of coming across orcas. You may think the great white shark with its 20-foot long body and 50 razor-sharp teeth is an unbeatable opponent in the ocean, but orcas have mastered the art of hunting these great white frights. Their method is dubbed the karate chop, as it's a technique carried out with the finesse of a martial arts master. Using its broad tail, the killer whale pushes the shark to the surface. The orca then pivots and raises its tail high into the air, crashing it down on the shark's head. The stunned shark is then flipped over, sending it into a paralysis state called tonic immobility. Now paralyzed, like the rays, the shark becomes fish food for the orcas. But this prized meal comes at a sharp cost to the orcas. Though sharks may look sleek and smooth gliding under the water, their skin is actually covered in tiny V-shaped scales that are more like teeth than fish scales. Like sharks weren't already lethal enough, 
The sandpaper-like quality of these scales can cause a nasty graze known as shark burn. They help the sharks decrease drag in the water, allowing them to swim faster and quieter. But this also comes at a nasty cost to the feasting orcas, as this scaly skin eventually wears down the orca's teeth to the gums. As such, orcas have learned to target only the most nutritious parts of the shark, the liver reducing the amount of contact with its skin, and often leaving the rest of a shark carcass to float off and rot. Ugh. Meanwhile, orcas off the Norwegian coast have learned how to herd fish like sheep. How? By creating bait balls. These orcas use a combination of air bubbles and belly flashes to herd schools of herring into a tight ball near the surface of the water. The orcas then slap the ball with their tails, stunning the fish, making them easier to gulp down by the mouthful. Okay, so they've learned to turn just about anything into a food source, but what about other threats, like beaching? For many sea creatures, beaching is bad. Being washed up on shore with no way to get back out into the deeper waters can lead to dehydration and death. But orcas haven't just conquered this weakness they've also turned it to their advantage. On the Argentinian coastline, orcas capitalize on the fact that elephant seals and sea lions use the rocky shores as a place to birth and raise their young. When the moment arises, the orca surfs a wave onto the shore, grabs a seal pup in its teeth, then rolls its body and uses another wave to pull it back into deeper water. And orcas don't just surf the waves, but create them too. In the southern ocean of Antarctica, they've developed an ingenious strategy to hunt. Seals often rest on ice floes, but even out of the water, seals aren't safe from orcas. Scientists have observed pods of five to seven orcas working cooperatively to chip away at the sides of floating ice floes, reducing the diameter of the seal's refuge. The orcas also push the ice out into open water and away from adjacent ice sheets, making escape impossible. Once the ice flow has been narrowed enough, the orcas retreat to a distance of roughly 50 feet, then simultaneously swim at full speed towards the ice. At the last moment, the group ducks beneath the ice, creating a wave that tips the ice flow and sends the seal crashing into the water. Bad news for the seal as it becomes dinner. But a clear demonstration of the genius tactics of these orcas as they continuously vocalize to each other to coordinate their group attack with such precision. In fact, there's no prey too big for orcas to handle. Like I said before, orcas got their famous nickname as they are literally killers of whales. They've been observed attacking gray whales, humpback whales, and even the world's biggest creature, blue whales. The attacks all follow a similar pattern. The orcas take turns ramming, biting, and pulling on the whale's fins and wearing it down. The orcas even launch aerial attacks, leaping from the water onto the whale's back, trying to prevent its blowhole from breaching the surface and starving it of air. After a chase that can go on for hours, the exhausted whale eventually drowns. The orcas then go to work, stripping the whale of its most nutritious parts, its tongue, blubber, and sometimes liver. But that's it. They leave the rest of the carcass for scavengers. So as you can see, there's no creature that orcas haven't worked out how to hunt, and now they've turned their attention to boats. But considering how inedible boats tend to be, why have orcas decided to start attacking them? Previously, they've been known to playfully chase after boats, racing them, often surfing the waves created by the wake. But orcas ain't playing no more. Now they've started charging at boats instead. And these aren't light taps either, but hard enough blows to send those aboard knocked off balance. Oh, oh you <laughs> hit the boat. <laughs> Are they trying to hit the boat? This particular incident occurred off the coast of New Zealand. But where there's been the most dramatic spike in orca aggression towards boats is along the Spanish coastline. And the reasons why are worrying scientists. 
Interactions are generally rare, with orcas only touching an estimated one in every 100 boats passing through the area. But when the orcas have launched attacks on boats, it's resulted in devastating damage. And that's what happened to Matt Johnson when he was sailing near Sines, Portugal in 2023. He was helpless as a pod of orcas circled around and then rammed into his boat, spinning it 90 degrees off course. The orcas worked in a closely coordinated effort, with the larger, older orcas battering the boat with their heads while a younger pair of orcas attacked the rudder and broke off pieces of the boat. What's interesting, though, is that other killer whale attacks in the area appear to follow this same distinct pattern. Like in this incident, when a yacht was sailing in the Strait of Gibraltar, the orcas hammered at the boat not once, not twice, but constantly for three hours. Eventually, they chewed off the rudder, and while it stayed afloat, the yacht had to be towed back to shore for repair. But what's the motivation behind these attacks? Well, scientists have two theories. Some believe it's a form of play, while others suspect it's cold, calculated revenge. But why would orcas want to enact revenge against humans? Have they realized we're the cause of all the plastic in the ocean? Or have they watched some of the many documentaries about SeaWorld? Well, a leading theory is that a traumatic event with a boat triggered a change in the behavior of one orca. Experts have named this female orca White Gladys, and believe she may have had a scarring incident with a boat during some illegal fishing activity. This painful event then flipped a behavioral switch in that orca's brain to attack other boats as a form of self-defense. Though you may be wondering, if this event only affected one orca, why have all the other orcas also begun hunting boats? Well, that's because orcas live in highly social matriarchal groups, where female orcas hold important positions. And because orcas are social creatures, they learn by copying behaviors performed by others. So, if a matriarch began attacking boats, it's likely this behavior was copied and rapidly spread amongst the rest of that orca population. Scientists believe orcas are not deliberately teaching their young to attack boats. Rather, the behavior has spread to the young orcas by imitation, because they've seen the adults do it and consider it an important skill to master. Which would explain why the orcas use the same methods to attack the boats again and again, essentially becoming part of the whale's culture. Now, you might think it's strange that I just used the word culture, defined as a manifestation of intellect regarded collectively. Surely that's something that only applies to humans, right? Well, here's the kicker. Different orcapods have their own unique cultures. They each even have their own languages. All the squeaks, whistles, and clicks they make may sound the same to us, but experts have analyzed these adorable sounds and discovered that even in orcapods that both reside in the coastal waters off British Columbia, their vocalizations are as distinct from one another as humans speaking English versus Greek. In fact, orca culture may be far more complex than we ever predicted. Scientists have found increasing evidence that culture shapes what orcas eat, their choice of mates, and even what they do for fun. Which leads to the alternative explanation for why orcas have started attacking boats. It may just be an elaborate, culturally accepted game. Still confusing? Okay, uh, how else can I explain this? Oh, remember the dangerous, idiotic, and viral Tide Pod challenge, where kids film themselves eating detergent capsules which are notoriously poisonous to ingest? Well, this could be the orca equivalent of that daredevil trend, the bite the boat challenge. Just like humans, orcas sometimes mimic behaviors from one another purely for fun. For example, in 1987, Multiple orcas in the Puget Sound were observed wearing dead salmon-like hats. Now, you may think that's probably a coincidence, but a dead salmon or two just happening to drift through the water and land on an orca's head? But no, this was a deliberate fashion choice. 
Biologists observed that the dead salmon trend begun by a female orca that spread like a viral challenge through two other pods. After about six weeks, the joke got old and the orcas stopped putting salmon on their heads. A few tried to bring the trend back the next summer, but failed to spark interest. Just as the internet's graveyard is full of old memes, so too do orcas discard and move on from their cultural fads. Researchers have also observed other unique behaviors, such as orcas residing near Vancouver Island that engage in greeting ceremonies, in which orcas line up in two opposing rows before tumbling together into a killer whale mosh pit. They also enjoy rubbing beaches, where they scratch their bellies on a smooth pebble beach on the island. Scientists have also observed near-human-like behaviors, such as the hosting of a funeral. I'm not joking, orcas kept the carcass of one of their pod members afloat on the tip of their noses for several days, in an act akin to mourning. Now that is a burial at sea. Ultimately, though, scientists still aren't sure exactly what's driving the orca's aggressive behavior toward boats. What remains most concerning, however, is just how dangerous these actions are for both humans and orcas. Tragically, since this behavior began in 2020, four orcas belonging to the Iberian subpopulation have perished. Though it has not been proven these premature deaths were the result of a boat collision, it seems likely that this behavior is causing the orcas to get more daring with humans, putting them at greater risk. And these deaths were a serious blow to the already endangered Iberian orca subpopulation, which, according to its last census in 2011, only amounted to 39 Iberian orcas. Unfortunately, there's no way for humans to change orcas' behavior, and it may take a while for it to pass out of the orcas' culture. You know what's easier to influence, though? Human behavior. So boats are now warned to steer well away if any orcas are sighted nearby. And to defend themselves, it's recommended that crews sprinkle 10 to 20 pounds of sand in the water around the rudder to confuse the orcas. Wait, sand? Yes, because orcas rely on sonar rather than sight to locate the ship's rudder. Pouring sand around the rudder causes the sound waves to scatter amongst the solid particles, confusing the orcas as to where the ship's rudder actually is. Banging pots and pans on deck also helps discombobulate approaching orcas. And with any luck, this trend will fall off like the salmon hat trend, or literally any dumb TikTok challenge. I still don't understand why every 12-year-old was obsessed with bottle flips. Man. Maybe I really am just that old. But for all the recent focus on orcas, we seem to have forgotten about a much larger threat in the water. Now, Moby Dick is possibly one of the most famous American novels, telling the tale of when a ship was sunk by a giant white whale. But did you know the book was based on a real story? Yeah, the world-renowned novel is based on the sinking of the real-life Essex ship in 1820. We may think of whales as gentle giants in the 21st century, but back in the 18th and 19th century, whale hunting was big business. Sperm whales were especially in demand, as a special kind of oil could be obtained from their head cavities. This waxy oil is known as spermaceti, and is why these humongous beasts are known as sperm whales. These oil sacs are used by the whale to adjust its buoyancy when it dives over 6,000 feet deep into the ocean after its favorite prey, giant squid. But, sadly for the whales, this oil could also be used for illumination and machine lubrication during the Industrial Revolution, which put it in popular demand and drove up the business for sperm whale hunting. Sound familiar? For anyone who's seen the second Avatar film, The Way of Wet or whatever it was, you can tell that James Cameron clearly took some inspiration from the Sperm Whale Wikipedia page. First Pocahontas, now this. Come on, man. Next you'll be making another Titanic film. Anyway, before sperm whales were hunted by humans, their only natural predator was, you guessed it, killer whales. To defend themselves against killer whales, 
Sperm whales would form a large circle with their young in the middle. They'd then lash out at orcas with their jaws or tails. And while this would keep the orcas at bay, it was an ineffective strategy against whaling ships, and being stationary made them even easier to hunt. By forming a large circle, the whales made themselves vulnerable to attacks from above with harpoons. But then there was a sudden shift in the whales' behavior. But according to the oil fishing logs, the hunts became less and less successful sometime in the 19th century. Eventually, the whalers' yield was reduced by more than half in the span of two years, with a reported drop of 58% in successful sperm whale hunts. This was odd, as typically humans become better at hunting a favored prey over time, with sophisticated technology and techniques being developed for the task. But what the whalers didn't predict was that sperm whales would outsmart them. Researchers now believe that the whales actually learned how to avoid the whalers and shared this information across the ocean. The sperm whales developed a new strategy of quickly swimming up current whenever they detected a hunting vessel. The whaling rowboats were too slow to chase after the whales against the flow of water, allowing them to escape. And just like other whale species, sperm whales are highly socialized animals. They're able to communicate with one another over great distances in the ocean through sonar clicks. These sonar clicks are so powerful that in close proximity, they can blow out a diver's eardrums or vibrate a person's organs to death. Divers have even reported partial paralysis after experiencing these sonar clicks. Jeez, and I thought whale song was meant to be relaxing. Like other whales, sperm whale culture is also matrilineal, and information about whaling ships may have been passed on in the same way whale matriarchs share knowledge about feeding ground locations. Sperm whales also possess the largest brain on the planet, weighing in at a staggering 20 pounds. So it's not hard to imagine how they figured out how they were being hunted and how to prevent this by developing such a simple yet sophisticated strategy. But the whales weren't strict pacifists either. In some cases, the whales attacked the boats instead by ramming them with their gigantic 20-foot-long heads, this is what happened in the case of the real-life albino sperm whale that attacked and sunk the Essex whaling ship, becoming the inspiration for the classic novel Moby Dick. So, if there's any lesson to be learned, don't mess with whales. When you're sailing in the ocean, you're in their domain. They can outswim and outsmart you. And sometimes, even the friendliest whale can have bad timing such as this right whale that accidentally ended up launching itself onto a yacht off Cape Town in 2010. Scientists suspect the whale was just being playful, but miscalculated how close it was to the boat. Poor whale. He was just trying to be nice, but ended up coming across as a real Moby Dick. Have you gained a whole new respect for whales? What orca hunting technique did you find the most impressive? And have you ever seen one in the wild? Let me know down in the comments, and thanks for watching.